Today I'm going to be talking about why you should stop wasting time not writing tests. So I'm going to need a bit of your cooperation. How many of you are developers here? Please raise your hands. Okay. Okay. So that's a lot. Okay. And how many of you develop developers test your applications? Raise your hands. Okay. About a half or something like that. So the other half got this question wrong. I didn't ask how many of you write tests for your applications. I didn't ask how many of you do automated tests for your applications. I just asked how many of you test your applications. And basically, when you go around your browser and click around uh, to see if everything is working, that is the definition of testing. We can divide developers into two groups. A group that does manual testing, and a group that does automated testing. So the group that does manual testing, that technique is also called F5 testing, or click and refresh testing, or yeah, whatever. I'm not going to go into any derogative terms. So what's wrong with manual testing, and what are the characteristics of manual testing? So for once, it's repetitive. Think about it. You're developing a feature, and you're in your code editor, and when you want to see if everything is all right, you have to go through your browser and click around to check it. Then you, get a, then you have to make a bug fix. Again, you're in your browser clicking around. Then you get a feature request. Click around. Then you need to refactor something. Click around. So it's quite repetitive. And to be honest, this room is full of smart individuals, programmers that work at well-established companies as freelancers or students that are like at computer science universities that are great, and we shouldn't be wasting our time doing repetitive tasks. Another thing that manual testing is slow. Lots of people think that it's fast in the beginning, but it's actually in the beginning, it's already slow. So you're clicking around your browser instead of letting your computer do that. And as your application grows bigger and bigger, you have to do more clicking to check if everything's OK. Another thing that it is, it's error prone due to human memory capacity. Think of, it, think of it this way. You've built up a feature six months ago, and you had something like five edge cases. You get a new requirement, and at that point, you modify that feature. And you have to remember all of those five edge cases that you did six months ago. I can guarantee you, you're at least going to forget about some of them. So, through, through the whole mankind, people have tried to automate all repetitive tasks so they can do it quicker and that they don't get bored. So Bob Lord of AOL once said, what get, whatever can be automated will inevitably be automated, and it should be automated. So let's talk about automated testing and what it is, what's, what's it about. So, Automated testing is a process of writing and executing scripts that simulate user interactions on our application before our application goes to production. That's pretty easy to understand, right? Right? Yeah. OK. Uh, so how is it better, actually, than manual testing? When I, I said that manual testing has three characteristics, well, automated tests don't have those three characteristics. For once, computers don't mind doing repetitive tasks. Secondly, computers are extremely fast at doing those repetitive tasks. They are faster than us going and clicking around through the browser. And also, they're not error prone due to human memory capacity. You write something down, it stays there. OK, so what are some of the excuses why people don't write tests? Well. I've heard this one and been guilty of giving this excuse. The application is too small to write tests for it. Well, something like a year and a half or two ago, I was developing an application, a server-side API that had only four API endpoints. And a mobile developer that was developing an Android application hook, hooked up on that API. I did it in a day or two. And deployed it and gave it to him so he can continue developing his application. After a few days, he pings me and says, OK, can you please optimize the API endpoint number one? 
Okay, I do it. I deploy, and he says, okay, the API endpoint number one is working perfectly, but I'm getting 500s for, a for API number two. API endpoint number two, sorry. And I was like, okay. Now I send out some GET requests through the browser or through curl and fix it. Then again, a couple of days after, comes a feature request, a new requ requirement request, a new optimization request. And all the time I have to do repetitive tests manually. So at that point, I just went online and read about how to test Ruby on Rails applications. I spent about two or three hours, wrote 10 or 15 tests, and at that point, I was confident that whatever I do, I won't push anything that can be broken. I didn't make my application error-prone due to my mistakes. One other thing why you should write applications for small, why you should write tests for small applications is that small applications actually tend to grow. If we make them good, it's not going to be only four API, a, API endpoints. It's going to grow until, I don't know, 100 API endpoints. <clears throat> yeah, I've heard this one, and I pretty much hate it. So writing tests is boring. I got a question for everybody that said this, and it's, is clicking around your application whenever something changes something you would call fun? Yeah, I don't think so. For most of the applications that I've never wrote tests, and currently I don't maintain any of those anymore. I hated to do refactoring, I hated to do bug fixes, I hated to change stuff when new requirement, requirements came in. I was under a bun bunch of stress, and yeah, basically writing tests maybe not, may not be your way of thinking of fun, but clicking around the browser is just way more not fun, way more dull. Okay, this one's a horrible one. So we don't have a specification. Tests are no use at all. Okay, yeah. I've actually heard this one a couple of times from random people. And my only answer to this is, if you don't have a specification for your application, how the hell are you writing any code? How, how do you know what to do with that application? Are you just coming up with user requirements or what? At that point, wherever you're working, stop, arrange a meeting with your project manager, with your client, with your product manager, with your boss, CEO, CDO, and whoever, and sort stuff out, please. Okay, another one. Yeah, stuff. Uh, yeah, okay, so another one that I really, really hate and I hate it the most, and that's the reason why I made this whole presentation, is we don't have time to write tests. At any given point when I hear this, I look like this. I really hate to hear that, and I'm gonna give you a few reasons why. Okay, so, uh, what's wrong with we don't have time to write tests? Well, well at first, if you started writing your application in a, while testing, you wouldn't have a time issue. It's really simple. It doesn't take extra time to write tests. Some of you maybe don't agree with this statement, but give me a minute or two. Okay, so how does a work cycle of a developer who starts writing tests freshly look like? He writes code and do manual, does manual tests. He writes code, does manual tests. He runs around in circles until, until he's finished with his feature. At that point, he says, okay, I'm done with my feature, now I have to write some tests. Of course, at that point, it's going to seem really repetitive that you just did a buttload of manual testing and you're doing automated tests. The thing is that you should never separate the application and your tests. Your job is not done until your tests are also done. The better way or the right way would be to write code, write tests, write code, write tests, or you can switch those two positions. I'm gonna talk about that a bit later. So you can see what I'm trying to say 
act the actual overhead of writing tests is not automated tests. You're not wasting time on automated tests. You're wasting time on initial manual testing. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. I work as a backend developer. I usually do APIs. So let's say you're writing an API. How many of you have ever written an API? OK, and how have you tested any API calls, how they work? Come on, give me an example. Curl. Curl. OK. Postman. Production. 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 Nice. <laughs> yeah. OK. So at that point, when you're testing it with curl, you write them down and execute them one by one through your console. My question is, yeah, uh, if you're using curl or postman, uh, we just not write tests immediately for that. It's going to be in your application code base. You can run it whenever. You can do continuous integration, continuous deployment. Why do curl or postman instead of tests? Or why do curl and postman wet writing tests? That's just plain redundant. Let's take another, yeah, sorry. So basically what I'm trying to say is you shouldn't check your implementation through the browser, through curl, through postman, from the beginning do it through tests. Let's, say another, let's take another example, testing large forms. I did this form somewhere like a year ago and it has 20 input fields and it has conditional fields. If you click this checkbox, then you should fill this in. If you click this, yeah, you get a drill. So I really hate testing large forms because it takes me, I don't know, 45 seconds to fill in this form whenever I make a change. Why just not write tests from the beginning instead of redundantly clicking around your browser to see if everything works? OK. Some of you might have a question like, shouldn't quality engineers, qu sorry, quality assurance engineers handle the testing phase? Yes and not. So let's take an example. If you give your quality assurance engineers an application with fairly simple bugs after you've done some refactoring, you didn't notice that you bra broke something. Basically, your quality assurance engineers are not going to be able to find the more advanced ones. Simple. Simple bugs hide the more advanced ones. They're going to they're gonna be stuck at simple bugs and won't be able to find anything more. Another thing is that you should let your quality assurance engineers take care of user experience, security, and all sorts of other weird edge cases. Basically, with your given deadlines and stuff like that and give your given human resources, the best you can do, if you give your quality assurance engineers a bad application, they can drive it to good. But if you give them a good application, they can drive it to excellent. It never goes from bad to excellent. Nobody has the time. You have deadlines, and you don't have resources to do that. OK, let's talk a bit about test-driven development. How many of you have heard about test-driven development? OK. How many of you hate it? Okay, okay. So, uh, so it's a philosophy where you should test first and write your application code next. And I found a couple of situations where that really helps me. So I've been working on a fairly complex project for the last year or something like that, and it's a shipment tracking application. I've got products that need to go into an order that's packed in a container that's shipped from point A to point B with a ship. So basically, what it looks like is I've got an order named XYZ shipped on December 21st, containing three cases of beer, traveling with a, name, with a ship named Marshall inside a container with an ID 161. Of course, my client at that point asked me, can I do a search functionality? Yeah, that's a completely reasonable requirement. I said, yeah, OK. So he said, if I enter XYZ, the name of the order, or December 21st, or beer, or Marshall, or the ID of the container 161, I should find my order. That's a perfect case for test-driven development. Why? Because I know the outputs 
for the given inputs. If I write 161, I'm going to get the order XYZ. If I write in Marshall, I'm going to get XYZ. And uh, at no point do I have to do I have to like do any manual testing. And at that point, I don't worry if I'm going to ever break something else. Another point that I've learned from working on this complex application is that I got an application with gazillions of edge cases. So at that point, when I specify something with my client, I try to first write tests for it before I do any application code. When I stumble upon any weird edge cases, at that point, I ping my client and ask him, OK, what am I supposed to do here? Then we figure it out. And usually, edge cases can drive your architecture in a, in a, in a wrong way. And test-driven development helps me deal with it. It helps me basically improve my specification through tests. So that's why it's awesome. OK, some of you might have a question how to start writing tests. Well, an excuse for people not writing tests is that writing tests is hard. OK, so maybe, but it's along the line is programming hard. All of you here know how to program, but perhaps to a person that doesn't know how to program, yeah, programming looks damn hard. So it's just a, it's a discipline of its own that you need to learn, but it's hard as learning a set of design patterns. When you learn it, it's going to make you a better developer. A common mistake that I also saw at various companies and or even with freelancers is that a developer says, I want to start writing tests. And it says that, and he says that or she to his client or a project manager or whomever. And almost always the answer is, we don't have time for that. We should work on our new features. Well, you started with quite a wrong approach there. Try a different approach. Make tests part of your development cycle. You're never done until your tests are done. Just as much, would any of you ever ask a project manager, can I write quality code? OK, so don't ask your project manager, can I write tests? Just make it part of your development cycle. Make it part of what makes you a better develop developer. OK, in conclusion, what I want to say, kick out manual testing just as much as you can. It's totally redundant. At some phases, yeah, you'll maybe want to try something out manually, but kick it out as hard as you can. Other thing, don't ask for time to do tests. Just do them. As I said, make them a part of your development cycle. OK, that said, my name is Damir Svrtan. I'm a Rails team lead at Infinum. Infinum is a software development agency here based in Zagreb. I'm also one of the organizers of Ruby Zagreb Meetup Group. If you ever want to talk about Ruby or about tests, just hit me up on Twitter. Thank you. We have a couple minutes for questions. Is there anyone here? OK. If you guys hand this back, please. Hi. Okay. So uh, what would you uh, suggest when some bad person has written an application without tests? So uh, where to start? Should you start from the bottom or so from you're, the top? So you're getting that application yeah, from that person. Let's say you are assigned to a new project where the application has zero test coverage. Yeah, I would just, whatever I write, whatever I touch, I would write tests for that. I would go in that term, and whenever I get some time to do it, I would test his code. I mean, the baddest thing you can do is touch someone else's code without tests or try to refactor it. You're, yeah, you're prob probably going to break it. Yeah, so whatever you touch, test it. That would be kind of a pragmatic way. Yeah, hi. Hi. 
Uh, what if you have a really difficult uh, like front-end feature that is really difficult to test and it takes a lot of time to learn how to test it and actually to write the code and everything and uh, if you did any, any time any manual testing on that you see that it works but it's damn difficult just to write a test. What do you do then? Yeah, I developed a feature, a front-end feature about a year ago that was really damn hard to test and I didn't write any tests for it and I hate myself for not writing tests for it because I have to start a uh, bunch of things just to try it out. And yeah, so I would say try to learn how to test it. I, yeah, I really regret not testing that feature. And I know there are some hard to test features, but okay, maybe you're not gonna be able to test that feature easily, but it isn't an excuse not to test the rest of your application. 